Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at how to create minimal house glitchy perk loops. Um, so like obviously you have your main main beat, like the kick, clap and hats, but then you might want to add extra groove with like perks. Um, and typically you might drop a loop in and chop it up or you might sequence your own perk. But this is kind of like a trick that I learned from a producer called Michael James, who has a page called Music From The Source on Instagram. Um, so this was kind of like a trick I learned from that. I thought I'd do my own kind of version of and share. So essentially, it's something like this. So you have the basic drums. So it's pretty glitchy and it kind of it kind of makes the basic beat a bit more interesting. Um so like there's like a sample pack by um trauma on sample market which has quite a lot of these percussive grooves. But obviously you wouldn't be here if you didn't want to know how to create them yourselves. So like Like a lot of them are quite glitchy and almost sound random in a way. Like these kind of loops he might have programmed in himself or he might have played with like software instrumentation, but I also feel like he could have used this technique as well. Um, so if I just, so this was an example I did. It's quite glitchy, works quite well. Um, so how to do that is this. I will create another channel. So that was the original one. That's how I created that and I bounced it out. So what you're wanting to look for is something called the selector kit. Um, it's one of Ableton's kits. For some reason my computer is being slow. Selector. And it will be in um, drums. You can pick any of them, I'm pretty sure. I don't think it matters which one, so go for this one. And basically, the way this kit works is ignoring those. They're not really, these aren't relevant, they're just effects. The way this kit works is for each sample. So you'd, you'd normally load in one sample. For each sample, there's multiple. So just to sh show you, there's, there's a setting called sample. I've drawn in notes on the percussion. You could do this on anything, to be fair, but the tutorial is on percussion. So like, basically the way this works is getting this dial to move. And the way we do that is using 
Ableton's built-in LFOs. Um, so if I just delete that, or I'll not delete it, I'll just close it. So you can map, basically, the way to get the randomness and get something moving once you've drawn in, like, basically draw in a MIDI pattern, something rhythmic anyway, the way you would do a usual percussion. Draw that in, and then map the LFO to the sample. And now we're getting variation. So you can hear like there's you're already getting some pretty creative results. So just to run through the controls, you've obviously got the mapping, which you can only map to one at a time. That's why I'd suggest maybe having more than one LFO on. And you've got the, these values. So I'm pretty sure this is the minimum and maximum. So it's not going fully down. Basically the range of samples you have at play. If you want it more crazy, you can have a bigger range. From zero to a hundred. Um, these don't really matter. The next ones are different waves. So that basically, that's basically how it goes up and down. So this one's going a full cycle. Um, of up signs going more gradually between them. But the one I normally do is random. You can experiment with these. So this randomly flicks between them at different rates, which is this next dial. So you can have the change really slow. Or really fast. I normally put it on like a quarter, an eighth, or a sixteenth. It depends how quickly you want the changes to happen. Net, and you can sync that as well, you can flick between them. It's like kind of like your delays. Um, depth is basically how far does it, if I go back to sign, it's basically going between, going quite quick. It's only going from about 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. With that, depth basically is how much it goes from left to right. So that 100 will go all the way from 0 to 100, covering more samples essentially. Because, like I said, what you'd, the sample dial loads in, each selector is like 127 different samples. And then offset is basically if you have it at a 50 or have it at like 20 so it's only going a small range of dials and you can basically offset it so that it goes to the right say you have a specific set of samples numbered on the higher end you want to ignore the lower ones like that that orchestral stab which is obviously in a higher if I wanted that I'd I'd set my range to the higher amount um but these are these don't really matter unless you're really specific with your samples if you are just going for randomness see and to get some creative results you can basically just leave these alone um unless you want some variation and you want to maybe experiment with a different set of samples 
but mainly the ones to look to look for are the different wave types and and the rate. <laughs> So now if I just dial something in, you know what, I might just keep that in to be fair, something like that, oh, don't want to freeze the whole thing, I just want to freeze I'll not do that. Or I will. I'll just. So now. Now that I've got something I like. I could just do this. So that's my new loop. Sounds all right. And finally, I mentioned about the two um, adding multiple LFOs. So you could, in theory, you'd use this LFO to map the sample. But you could, in theory, map use this use second three LFOs and other ones to map different parameters. So maybe like the rate. Maybe, so you'd make, you could automate how quickly the rate changed. Um, this is getting crazy now, to be fair. This is obviously just optional. And you could map this to the depth. So now, just get rid of that. It basically gives you more variation and some more crazy results as opposed to just a, if you just automate the sample, um, you basically get a random perk loop. Um, if you automate how quickly they change, it kind of makes it even more random in a way. Because now if I was to freeze it and bounce it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's basically how to create glitchy minimal house type park loops, similar to like the pack I showed um trauma sample market. Who knows, he might have even used that technique at some point. Um so yeah, the techniques by Michael James from Music from the Source. So feel free to check that out as well. I think it was tutorial number one. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd do my own, own spin on it because it's a really useful tip. So credit to him and I hope you liked. As always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more useful tips like this. I'll see you in the next one.